welcome back to another episode of the Gap Down Backer Podcast. Um, today we have David Howes, uh, the safeties coach at University of New Mexico. Coach, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. No problem, Coach. I, I appreciate you coming on. Um, but for any of our uh, listeners who may not have know who you are or kind of how you ended up in New Mexico, can you kind of give them a brief kind of background on how you ended up at New Mexico coaching safeties? Sure. I, uh, at the very beginning, um, I was actually born here and then I went to Idaho until I was about 10 and came back to New Mexico and I, I started my career here. Um, I played it, uh, for a very short time at, at NMSU after leaving Cibola high school and high school here in Albuquerque. And, um, I was at NMSU for a couple of years. I ended up transferring here to the, the university of New Mexico and finishing my degree, two degrees. Actually, I got my master's here as well. And then I was at that time, very young, just kind of just getting out of get the, out of playing. And, and my high school coach asked me if I'd be interested in coaching. And I, I said, well, not really, you know, I, I, in my mind, I was still a player and, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I found out by going, you know, to New Mexico state, I, I wasn't as good as I thought I was. And, and then, uh, my coach saw something in me and asked me if I wanted to start coaching high school football. And I was still, you know, in the, in the process of figuring out who I was and what I was going to do. And, and I was working full time, going to school full time. And I said, well, sure, I'll, I'll interview and, and, Luckily, I ended up starting at a high school here on the west side and starting off uh, varsity right away. And so I, I coached varsity football for a while and and it kind of evolved from there. And as as time went on, I, I started getting to the point of, you know, trying to break myself back into the game. And as you know, it's very difficult to do um, yeah. once you've been out of the game where you start a coach in high school football, um, that transition, getting back into it if you don't stay in the system or do it through a GA ship or, you know, something like that, it gets very, very uh, difficult. So, um, you know, I kept plugging away, but as time moved on, I ended up uh, going to another school at the, my alma mater at Cibola high school. Then I ended up moving on to a place called Rio Rancho high school in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. And I became the head football coach there in 2009. And I was the, head football coach there in a 6A program for the next um, going on 12 years. Um, I had been there already for six years as an assistant. So total about 25 years in in high school football. And, uh, you know, I kind of got to the point where I started feeling like uh, I was, uh, you know, getting to the point of almost having to to settle off into the sunset, but I didn't want to do that. And I, I really wanted to to start uh, transitioning a little bit. And at that time, Coach Gonzalez was at um, Arizona State, and we had had many discussions over the years because I've known him now 30 years, um, you know, since he was in, in college and in high school, actually, when he was at Valley High School in Albuquerque. Um, and so as the time had gone on, you know, an opportunity arose there at ASU that I, I may be going over there, and I had a taken my staffs to, to Arizona State multiple times to clinic with their staff and to sit in on meetings and um, visit with Coach Edwards and the, the staff. And obviously that's a tremendous staff and some just a wealth of knowledge. And then as that process was going on, uh, the head coach at Chandler, Ham or Chandler ended up being the running backs coach at ASU. And so I was going to put in for the Arizona at, at Chandler job. And then, I don't know, I just did, right before the interview, I just – had a, a, a thing, a, a instinct, I guess, or a thought that I would, you know, stay, you know, stick with the, the plan of possibly going to ASU or, or maybe transitioning if another opportunity opened up and really just by the grace of God, I, you know, being a local guy and a New Mexico guy an opportunity moved open when coach Gonzalez got here. And, and after everything unfolded and the smoke cleared, I ended up uh, transitioning from a six, a program here into this program and, you know, Coach Gonzalez is really, really uh, um, ingrained in this community. He's ingrained in New Mexico football. He's ingrained in the University of New Mexico, but really in high school. And uh, so I really wanted to embrace, and he wanted to embrace uh, having somebody on staff that can that, that can tie in really closely with the high school coaches and the high school community here, and and um, you know, you know, also you know, transition into. Um, the safety position or linebacker position at the time. And then even by a bigger blessing, Coach uh, Long ended up retiring at um, at uh, San Diego State. 
and he ended up moving over here and becoming the defensive coordinator in and here. And this is actually his fourth tour at the <laughs> University of New Mexico. So uh, I benefited from that as well. And so now I have the the, the blessing to, to coach football and learn from Coach Gonzalez and Coach Long and, and really um, grow in my career, which I thought that um, maybe I was on the tail end of, of a certain aspect of my career. And now I've shifted gears in a completely different direction. And and it's awesome, and it's it's it, and that, here I am. Well, what was that transition like from going to high school to college, and then having the opportunity to learn from Coach Gonzalez and uh, Coach Long, not from just necessarily a clinic perspective, but from a full time. I'm with them now every day, coaching with them and learning from them. Well, at the same time. that's a great question. I you know when when you're a young coach and you're fixing it to transition to becoming a, a head coach, you think you're ready and you think you've been ready and you think you got overlooked three or four times before you interviewed and finally got a job. And, and, um, and I thought I was ready. And then I spent the next 11 years, 12 years figuring out that, that I wasn't ready when I thought I was ready. And then um, transitioning into this, you know, I thought, you know, you, you get to the point where you think you, you, you got it all locked down and you got it all learned and figured out. And, and, uh, I got here and I realized I didn't know, uh, no much. And so, um, I got an opportunity to really sit down and start picking their brains and, and spending a lot of time with coach Gonzalez and coach long. And we'd been running a, um, you know, a, a remnants or a, a piece of this defense for many years at Rio Rancho, uh, just kind of tapping into coach Gonzalez through all those years. But, um, at the end of the day, I, I, I had so far to go and, and I still have so far to go and it's awesome. Um, and so the transition was, was, I thought would be a lot simpler than it was, but you know, the speed of the game and, and terminology and language and all those kind of things, those are, are things I had to hit the ground running. And, and I had three weeks before we started spring ball when I made the transition so, I mean, I was on the road immediately, recruiting immediately. I was in California and Utah and in Nevada and Arizona. And that was right before the pandemic hit. And then we start spring ball and then we get, I have two weeks of spring ball and then the pandemic hit. So it was a very uh, crazy um, transition, I guess I should put it. It was like a whirlwind, but, um, you know, these guys made it, made it easy, um, you know, to, to settle in and, and start learning the scheme and, and really getting the, the nuts and bolts of this thing down and, uh, and, and just their professionalism. And, and they've been doing this for so long. They just, they made my job a whole lot easier. Uh, you mentioned your, your defense there. Um, how would you describe what the New Mexico defense is? Because some people would describe like looking at the, the long Gonzalez kind of coaching tree and the defense um, some kind of just try to blanket it as some sort of odd front defense. Some try to blanket it just as a 3-3 defense. But, I mean, it doesn't look like a typical defense half the time. There, there's a lot of variety in lineups and coverages and a lot of things y'all do. So, in, in like, uh, in, how would you describe what y'all do? So, that's another great question. I, I You know, 3-3-5, three, three, you know, is probably the blanket statement, but it's it, oh, the easiest way to sum it all up is it's multiple. And it's it's just like the multiple offenses today. Um, you know, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors and a lot of movement and a lot of changes, and, and, and nothing is typical about it. Um, and that makes things uh, difficult on offenses. They don't typically see this kind of stuff and, and the changes that we make on the fly. And, and so I think, you know, it's multiple and we have the ability to change to formations and, and we have the ability to change the personnel mainly. Um, everything's called off of personnel. And so, um, you know, we're always going to be paying attention to the personnel and tight ends. And with today's game being basketball on grass and and 12 personnel and 11 personnel and a whole bunch of formation changes, you know, we've got to evolve with the times for sure. And this defense, I think, allows you to evolve with uh, with with all the different changes every single year that happens with a lot of great offensive coaches out there like yourself and a lot of the other coaches out there. Um, they're always learning. They're always evolving. They're always changing. They're changing tempo. They're changing personnel packages. They're changing the size of these receivers and, and their abilities and who they recruit and how they recruit. And so 
uh, to keep up with the times, Coach Long and, and really the tree that he comes from, the tree that, that he learned from, they've learned to evolve with uh, the type of athletes that you typically get at the certain school that you're at. You can tailor this defense to uh, more linebackers if you have a, a bunch of linebackers, not a lot of defensive linemen, or you've got a heavy defensive line package, and so you can tailor it to that as well without making a lot of changes. Um, you know, and then defensive back wise, you got to be athletic and you've got to be able to be multiple and be able to play corner and safety. And, and have, we have a Lobo position or a hybrid linebacker slash free safety position that you have to kind of recruit or have the ability to have a kid that can do that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, so far everything, you know, even when I was in the high school ranks, um, you know, having the kids, you get what you get, you can't recruit anybody. And so, you know, he, you, you learn to kind of move it around and, and, and shape it the way that you need to shape it to your opponent. So a lot of the stuff that this thing does being multiple allows us to uh, tailor it to the opponent week in and week out. And when you talk about Air Force versus San Jose or, or even Boise, you know, you've got so many different uh, variables in there. This defense allows you to be multiple enough yeah. to do that. And if you've followed Coach Gonzalez's career, I mean, some of the stuff that he's done and even Coach Long this last year, I just sometimes I would walk out of there going, what, what are you? <laughs> okay, let's go, you know, and, and we're lining up with two defensive linemen and five linebackers or two defensive linemen and four linebackers. And, and it's, it's teaching one guy as opposed to five or six different guys, different jobs. And, and, uh, you know, you watch coach Gonzalez at ASU when they lined up against, uh, uh the mad hatter at Washington state, you know, I mean, come up with different schemes that cause those uh, air raid offenses so much, so, you know, so many problems when timing of the football coming out kind of kills your pressure, but the confusion of the coverage or dropping eight as opposed to dropping four or dropping five yeah. um, cause those kind of, you know, the, cause you to just hitch up just long enough for pressure to get there. So just watching the, the way that they can tailor this defense and move it around and change it around personnel wise has really been eye opening and, and, and I can see the benefits at all levels at high school and college to be able to uh, uh, pull it, uh, a nose guard out and put in another Mike linebacker and uh, create movement that way. Okay. And I, I kind of want to start getting into, and, and it's part of the reason why coaches film pulled up already for those watching, not just listening. Um, like we, me and him talked back and forth, and we wanted to talk a little man free, cover one, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, Coach, I'm going to kind of let you do your – I mean, like, for, for, uh, let me rephrase this. What, what, what for you guys, what is man free, cover one, in a nutshell, what is it for you guys? Well, it's like it is for anyone else. You know, we yeah. have five defensive backs, and we have the ability to not overlap each other, and we've got the ability to bump everything. And so at some point in time during the play, somebody's going to be free. Okay. It may not be the same guy. It may not be a free safety. It may be a back safety. Sometimes it'll be the corner. But we have the ability to move things around. But at the end of the play, if I got a guy, I'm covering a guy. And if I don't have a guy, I'm free. And so, you know, that's, that's really your, you know, one for one, two for two, three for three, and and if you don't have anybody, you're free kind of deal. So um, it's man free, it's cover one, and and we just have a different, a bunch of different ways of doing it. Okay, and so so now is it? Does your variety come from the variety of formations you might see, or is it more like kind of like the variations of cover three, where it's a called variation, or is it a combination of kind of both? So you're going to get our variation or our, our mixture of who's going to be free determined on your formation okay. and your motion. So as an offensive coordinator, you try to toy with all that kind of stuff by, you know, smoking mirrors and moving motion around and personnel and changing personnel and, you know, probably clouding things up and going with some tight formations or some nasty formations. And so any way you can get us to, to the point of where you can rub us or bump us or, or cause us our eyes to get dirty is your job. And, um, and so we've got to do a really good job of recognizing the formation and being able to communicate on the back end to make sure we, we keep our eyes clean and we stay focused. So obviously keeping um, high school kids or college players focused for four quarters and, and playing and play out, you know, you're going to get some dirty eyes every now and again, but 
but you know our job is to make sure that their eyes are clean and the communication is clean so you know as we go through the film you'll be able to see some of that um, in those changes and how that variation changes according to the formation but again it's it's how really it's about leverage and it's about rifle techniques on somebody getting over the top and playing high high to low and uh, moving through the the play that way be it sprint out or boot or or uh, what what route concepts we're seeing okay and then before we get to the film real quick i mean how, how much uh now obviously you have variations of coverage but how does that affect your run fits for when i mean I, ideally we're running man free against some sort of pass concept usually so we can get some rush but for, from a run perspective, how does that affect your run fits and how you fit this depending on the personnel you have on the field? So so traditionally, a lot of people play man-free with a free player playing back at 15, 20 yards, or you know, they play really soft and they play over the top. Um, for our run fit, we play everybody in all of our coverages right around 10 yards, and we play tight to the line of scrimmage, and we rifle from there, and and you've got to be pretty athletic and you got to be willing to run all over the field and you got to have a high effort and, and really, and we'll get to data and coaching points here in a second, but um, you know, the biggest thing to this defense is effort. And I know people in these days don't want to hear about effort. They don't, they want to hear about scoring points and they want to hear about sacks and turnovers. But at the end of the day, we can't do what we do. And coach long is so incredible. And coach Gonzalez is so incredible in the, in the sense that, they focus everything we do on every single play based on running to the ball, effort to the ball, running to the ball. And it gets tedious. It gets exhausting. Coaches don't want to talk about it. Coaches don't want to coach it, um, play in and play out. And that's what we do here. Every single thing that we do is based on running to the ball and, and finishing the play. And kids from the back end that are far away from the play, not understanding proper angles. It, literally, it's pursuit on every single play, yeah. whether we're in team, whether we're in Skelly, whether we're in one play role or three play role, we are constantly running to the ball. And it's it's taken some time now. I mean, it took every bit of spring ball last year and then getting into having to spend 42 days in Las Vegas through the pandemic and our season. If you watch us in week one to week six or week five, really, it was night and day from us getting from one spot to the other and our, our angles and finishing plays. It was night and day. Um, we still played San Jose very, very well. And we played Nevada very, very well. But at the end of the day, we couldn't finish. We gave up some big plays um, because of bad leverage and we couldn't finish some of those close games. And then as we got down to, to Wyoming and, and uh, Fresno, our guys were finishing plays and hitting anything that was anything that was twitching and, and I'm playing the, the brand of this football that it requires, and that's running to the ball and 11 hats to the ball. And, and really, our, our philosophies are very simple here. You know, it's, it's about 11 hats to the ball. Every coach says that, but we really commit to that, um, and we demand that. And uh, obviously, knowing what to do and how to do it, that's the most important, knowing your job. And then keeping them out of the end zone. People talk about all these data points and yards per rush and yards per pass and and, but at the end of the day, keep them out of the end zone. And so um, that's really what this is all about is effort and the tenacious effort and the aggressiveness of this defense. And so it's a commitment by everyone. And if you can't commit to that, you're not going to play. That's that's the bottom line. Okay. Well, let's, let's watch some film, Coach, and you can kind of break some of this stuff down. All right. So what you see up here right now is just a typical two-high two shell. Now, I, I started off with our threes. This is spring ball. A lot of high school coaches or coaches have to deal with moving players around. So these two safeties that you're seeing, this safety here, and I think that you can see my highlight yep. here, this safety and this safety right here are both corners converted, and they both had a week to learn this stuff from the uh, going from corner to safety. And this right here is a, a, a safety that now is playing our Lobo position. So this Lobo free safety middle position can hybrid into the box and back and that sort of thing. But any play that we, we line up and we want to line up in a, uh, a split field coverage and we want to show two different shells and we, and we're going to show it too high. So as you see this, really there's a mistake here. And so this cat right here, he should be moved over and he should split the difference being outside of number three. He's on the outside shoulder of number two, and this is the safety and the corner should actually be pressed up. And these are all 
young new players right here. So there's some adjustment adjustments to be made, but in reality, we're showing basically in this pretty, we can show cover four on both sides. We can show cover two. It looks like cover two. Once we move out of it on the boundary side, or we can show a cover four or cover three into the field. So this particular call, we're showing cover three to the field, cover two to the boundary. And so we have a split field coverage going on and then different linebackers will drop out to take care of their zones. And so as the safety walks out, he's going to line up. And so we're at the snap of the ball, we want to be six yards outside shoulder, which is where we would be in our man free concept. He should be pressed up, which is where he would be in a man free concept and using a bail technique. He would walk over and look like the free and he'd be over here showing a cover two side. So at the end of the day, we want to be able to show a split field cover. So I tell yeah. you that because now I'm going to go into our man free stuff. We can, adjust that split field look to any coverage we can move into man we can move into cover one cover two cover three cover four all from that split field look so it gives a pre-snap two high shell but it can easily turn into 3d four under 3d three under however we want to tailor that 2d four under 2d three under it just depends on what we're running so we want to stem everything out of a out of a look that's why everyone has their inside foot back inside foot back so he he has his inside foot back to where the ball is and this young guy should not be rifling over the top right here he should be staying straight back now we want to show the same shell so this lobo here whenever you're free or showing your shell or stemming he needs to be at 10 yards yeah so he's way too too shallow right now he needs to be back this safety right here their marks or the coaching point are outside shoulder six yards eight yards, eight to 10 to give that split field look. And he's showing a cover two on this side. As you can count here, he's only at seven yards. We want him back to yeah. be about 10 yards. So at pre-snap, we should show a two deep shell. These guys should be rotated up. It should look like cover three to the field, cover two to the boundary. But as soon as, as soon as that cadence starts happening, the quarterback gets set, gets ready to slap his hands together. He can already be in what we call our, we have a name for it, but it's a split field coverage. So he's already at six. He would come from 10 down to eight. So they would be at six and eight. And both of these guys are going to be comboed with these two okay. safeties. And this guy is going to be your free because he's away from the three by side and he has nobody. So coaching point to this is everybody's locked up. Everybody's got a guy. Now this cat right here, the key element is he's got to pop his feet. We don't want him just bailing out of here and just being free to be free. So we, you were just talking about the run fits. He's got to sit back here and pop his feet for the run fit on this edge right here. Yeah. And so he's going to keep the ball on his inside shoulder if, if it shows his way. Okay. So he's going to pop his feet. As soon as he recognizes the pass, then he'll rifle to the post, hide it, hide a low. So he's going to get a late rifle, but he's going to early pop his feet and get a run fit depending on down and distance and tendencies, obviously. Okay. Okay, so he's way too tight right here. But as you can see, because of, of down and distance being third down, this safety walked all the way up and he's committed himself to this tight end now. And he's saying, lock, lock, lock. He's going to take this. Safety has this, corner has this, corner has this, and he's free. He should take two steps back on the snap of the ball. Now they get motion. Once they motion over, that's the, that's the split field look that we wanted to get from pre-snap. Now he's naturally lining up in it. But... There's your split field look. As soon as that ball goes to get snapped, he needs to be down here at six yards, colliding his out the number two outside shoulder, yeah. killing the outside route, and, and taking care of pushing him into your help. Now this Lobo is free, and he's ready to rifle. But he can still pop his feet to a run fit inside out. And if he gets any sort of pass, he rifles deep and takes care of the posts. Okay, so let's watch it play out. Okay, so you can see 25 jump down in there at six yards, and he's matching the stem, staying on the outside half of number two. He's pushing him into his help. The wolf up top is, is coming through the back hip, back pocket, getting ready to play the slant from the top shoulder. He doesn't cliff it out. We call that cliffing it. We don't want to fall off the cliff, so make sure we pop our feet. Active feet, get ready to drive on the slant from the top shoulder. And the Lobo's back there playing quarterback's eyes. And as you can see, he doesn't have to bail out of there. He's recognized pass. He doesn't get any vertical threat. Quarterback's eyes. Now he can fly downhill and get ready to pop somebody. Yeah. Now. Okay. Very as, standard here. Go ahead. As, as you teach this, 
is it from a install perspective, is it better to teach your combo and your split field stuff before you teach this so they have a better understanding of how, I don't know, the alignments will adjust, especially when you're starting to get motion and other things? So we'll give the split field look first. That's going okay. to be the basic thing that we do. We're going to run that, that zone first. We're going to give a four-man rush out of a split field look and give that same look to everything, but then we're going to run different combos out of that or okay. different split fields out of that depending on what we're better at or what personnel we have or what we like best or what we're most efficient in. And so if we end up going with that cover three, cover two side and splitting that up, then we'll line up in that shell, which is all going to look the same no matter how you skin it, but we're going to run it out of that. And so we'll start stemming and adjusting from that shell. So we'll run that shell first and get a lot of four man okay. rush. And again, to your point, we can line up in an even front or we can line up in an odd front and bring a linebacker from the outside. And now we can slant to that even front or that one and three shade and we can do our movements from there, either way, ending up in that zone. So we teach that zone first when it comes to install. That's the very first thing that we do. Oh, yeah. And then once we get to the man-free concepts, then it's an easy transition. It's just leverage and walking up to your point or being like 25 is doing right here, coming down at six yards and making sure that we're ready to collide the out. We never back away from a tight end. And that kid in front of him is a tight end right there. So he's not backing away at all. It's a fist fight, and we're taking care of his outside shoulder now. Okay. Thank so you. right there, it's just a quick – if you look at it as a snap of the ball, that looks like it could be cover three right there. Um, that Those corners can be in a bail technique, but because of the way they're turning their hips, they're obviously not, but they could bail from there. Um, both the Wolves can come up and collide the outside shoulder and play cover three from there, and then you have a true free safety with the Lobo. But at the end of the day, we're in a man-free concept here, and we're taking – I've got a number two to my side, so I'm taking him, and Lobo has no number three, and the back is taken care of by the lone linebacker right there, as you see in the picture. Okay, so it, typically if we're coming off the edge and we have edge rushers, if that back, back peels, if he peels the way of the linebacker, he'll take him, but if he peels the other way or trades and goes the other way, that linebacker coming off the edge to the field will take him, and we call that peel. So we've got him taken care of depending on the call. Perfect. Code. Okay. Makes sense. Yep. Another variation here. Okay. We start off in trips right here. So as you can see, we're at six and eight with both the Lobo and the Wolf up top and the bottom Wolf is finally lined up correctly at 10 yards. He's ready to pop his feet and clear a run. He says, I got him. I got him. I got him. He starts to walk up and get to the outside shoulder of that tight end. He doesn't want to cliff it. He doesn't want to scoot. He's going to go ahead and collide the outside shoulder of that tight end. And now that Lobo is free in the middle of the field. They rotated a little bit early. I'd like to stem that and disguise that a little bit better than that. But at the end of the day, we're right back into where we were on that last clip. Outside shoulder, kill the outside route. Don't let it kill your stem. Make sure as you start on leverage, outside leverage, or you start on inside leverage, you end on outside or inside leverage. So you got to be really careful with try, trying to trade leverage and losing leverage and giving up the whip or, or anything going in and out. You got to make sure you're playing that from the back pocket right there and not giving up your leverage. Making sure you on the opposite wolf up top, making sure you don't rock back on those heels and get back and set back in your heels and get back on your tail right there. We can go ahead and make contact with our right hand and go ahead and one hand check that, stay on the back pocket and give it to your Lobo on the center field player at 15 yards. And if he, he probably doesn't even need to pedal this long, when you look at the Lobo, he's got quarterback intention into the boundary right now. So he should already be over the top of those two routes right there looking for the post. Yeah. As you can see, the corner comes off nice and makes a play on the inside hip right there. After he's come off of the outside hip, he sees it, and he works back underneath, underneath from the top hand, and he's ready to disrupt the top hand or play it. Probably gets away out of a little bit of a hold right there, but good job on the play. Any questions on that? No, that's, that's perfect, Coach. Okay. All right, so now you start getting into the coaches getting clever now and saying, all right, <laughs> let's start messing with your eyes a little bit. So – as the, the wolf on the on the field side here, he's got to get himself to an outside leverage. As you can see, when we say leverage, if you and I were lined up against each other and you walk forward and I walk forward, we would nip each, other, nip each other's shoulders to yeah. be in a proper leverage. As you can see, this corner that's now a safety 
he's going to be a good one. He's just learning the position. He's got to take a step outside and he's got to go ahead and put the inside tip of his shoulder on the outside tip of that receiver. And if you look at this, I'm okay with where he started, but at the snap of the ball, he shouldn't be at nine yards. He's way too deep. He should be sitting there right on the outside shoulder at six yards. And this Lobo now can start widening out and splitting the difference. He wants to stay. This is the Lobo here. He wants to stay on the outside shoulder of this, but we want to give the split field look. And once we start getting cadence, I want to walk down to eight and be able to drive on that inside shallow route if we're locking it. If we combo it, then these two are going to combo and he's going to come across. He'll take that. He'll rifle free. All right. There's your, there's your run fit when you're talking about um, split zone, um, you know, inside run, power, things like that. A uh, counter, when you get counter, as you see this come across, you see him run fit and he's going to be there to be able to rifle back or he can fit up in there inside out now. But typically, we're going to lock that and we're going to be able to drive on that from eight yards. And right there, there's your run fit to this side. As soon as you get a block from the Y, it's an obvious down block. Now he can fit. And he can force and he can be a secondary force contained guy as long as his guy's blocking. Once we have a guy, and this is his guy right here, once he's committed and out of the equation, I can now secondary force contain this or stretch this. If we lose this drag, I can stretch this and work underneath it if I want to. But really, I've got the ability to secondary force contain or work under, underneath that. If you look at the backside wolf, when he's free, He's got to pop his feet, but as soon as he gets sprint out right here, first of all, he's a little bit shallow. He's sitting at nine. He should be at 10. As soon as he gets sprint out, he should be gone. So now this rifle technique from right there, as soon as he gets that sprint out, he should already be coming over the top to take care of the, the post, to take care of the vertical in case that corner comes off on the shallow or we don't get that lobo or the linebacker underneath the drag. Yeah. So he has the ability to come off and play down on that if need be. And I believe it happens right here. So if you look at it, as he's rifling back, he's playing quarterback's eyes. Watch the quarterback come all the way back across his body, trying to throw that back, which is probably a sin. But as soon as he comes <laughs> back, you see the rifle player now recognize, instead of going all the way over the top to this corner smash route, he's now going to drive down on top of that that drag that was let loose by a freshman corner, and he's going to drive through the bottom hip. Unfortunately, the ball is misthrown, and it's even behind him, and he can't make the play. But he yeah. touched it. He should have caught it, all right? But <laughs> as you can see, he was able to be free and undercut that and under, undercut the quarterback's eyes. Yeah. Okay, so there's your rifle technique and your free, free player away from – they both are looking at run fit. You can see number three already in run fit. He recognizes sprint out. Now he's able to work, and he's not getting any sort of an indication that quarterback's trying to run that, so he starts to get a little bit of depth and actually starts to settle underneath that drag right there. So it's got a corner, a, a wolf, and another wolf yeah. starting to work back and zone up underneath that to help with it. Four hats on the ball. And when somebody needs to get a hat on this guy, preferably that corner that's staring right at him, needs to stern him right now. Yeah. Okay. Any questions on that? No, I, I, I love I love right there how you how you adjust your essentially man free at that point into almost a double bracket to a point, just because of right. one one they keep a guy in obviously for sprint out protection, but just how they were able to naturally just okay I I now fit here I now fit here. That was a great way, at least visually for me, to see, oh, okay, that's how that would adjust if you got that sort of look. And and it may determine what opponent you're playing, the skill yeah. of your opponent, the skill of your defensive backs, and the intelligence. We don't typically recruit defensive backs that get 2.3s in high school and can barely uh, qualify because this requires some pretty headsy, focused, you know, locked-in people. And so – We've got to recruit as many locked in people as we possibly can. So to all those young coaches out there and young players, grades and, and academics, those are strong indicators on their ability to play defense and their ability to stay locked in. I'm sure you feel the same way for, for your guys as well. Yeah. So on this man free here. So now a good offensive coordinator says, all right, so now we're going to start to bunch things up, cloudy up your eyes. We've got a, a, a nasty formation and a trips nasty here. Um, they, they've got the ability to be in 12 personnel here. So as is now you start getting these motions, you can do this in lots of different ways. You can combo this on both sides and leave the Lobo free, or you can 
you can lock this because it's all bunged up. So the corner can say, I got a week. can say, I got one. The safety has two. He's got one. He's got two. And the Lobo is free. We can lock all that up. We can combo that, or we can four way that or five way that it won't be a five way. It'll be a four way. Leave the Lobo free and four way those four. That's the most complex way of doing it. So the easiest way in spring ball is to go ahead and lock that up and play that lock. Now, yeah. once they've determined lock, now, as soon as it comes back, these guys have to be heady enough to know it's a three-way for us. So watch him come back and watch the corner bump off for the motion. You see it right there? Yeah. So the corner is bumping off right now, and this is a play I think we saw in the Super Bowl that they ran on the three-yard line, and they, 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 they went all the way over into a two-man set, came all the way back and traded this, and that backside Lobo or this backside player got caught in the movement and then he got caught in all this trash and he couldn't get over with it. And they just came right back out with an arrow and scored a touchdown. So what we want to see happen here is as soon as that comes back, he should bump, he should slide, and his eyes go directly to him. He's now free. Okay. Okay? So as you notice, with that motion that came back, he has nobody to cover, so he knows he's free. Okay. Yeah. As soon as these guys go, it's three ways. So it's these three for these three. Yeah. Okay. So as soon as that happens coming back, they say three way, three way, three way. And now that corner can bump off. 25 is new, like I told you before. So as soon, while he's talking about it, he needs to be about it. And as soon as that motion comes back, he needs to come off and he needs to slide over and get in a force alignment. Yeah. He just needs to slide. He didn't do that. He can stay inside like he was. That's fine because ultimately he's going to take whatever route comes inside. And let's just get even more complicated here. Once you get some smart guys back here, and I'd probably do it with our, our number ones, our, our starters, as he comes back right there, now they can really alert this slice right here. So uh, you being as smart as you are, you'd bring him back to dirty everybody's eyes, slice him back across and, and possibly – work back up underneath that. So what we can do is as soon as they go three way, he knows he's pre-snap free, but as soon as he slices across, he can take the slice, which makes him free. Yeah. So as soon as he starts coming back, all eyes go to the Y. Okay. So yeah. if he goes vertical at all, they keep in the three way. If he goes back, these two trade. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, so we don't overlap each other, and it makes your run fits a lot cleaner. Now, when you're teaching this, I mean, like, I feel like I'm getting, like, a, a PhD in man-free adjustments here. Um, how much How much of this is this visual? How much is this walkthrough? How much, how much, how, like, no, 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 I'm serious, like, from a player's no, perspective. No, I'm with you. I'm I with mean, you. Like I, I and honestly, I'm loving this right now. This is this stuff's fantastic. But like, I, I'm thinking also from te a teacher and a kid standpoint, whether it's a high school kid or a college kid, doesn't really matter. How like how do you install this so they can best grasp this? Obviously, on field reps are the best reps, but you, you for get, sure. But you got to get to that point to where at least they have a base understanding of it, so they can do that on field rep, and you're not just losing your mind. Um, so we do we do so much movement and and kudos to these players now. I mean, give me a break. What, what they have to, uh, you know, they really got to lock in. And when we first got here, it was mind blowing to a lot of them. But I'll tell you what, I was a little mind blown too when I when I came here and I saw how these guys accelerated through the smoke on all the mesh concepts that we're seeing now. You can get mesh out of this alignment really really easy. But um, at the end of the day, depth is very important. And patience is very important. So you have to teach formation recognition. You have to teach patience to the trigger. And then you have to teach the ability to communicate. And so those are all scenarios that are really tough on today's players. They don't talk to each other. They don't, uh, they typically don't talk to each other. So you got to get a Lobo in there that's very intelligent, that can run the defense and, and, and really kind of direct traffic, understand concepts understand the the past concepts out of what formations you're going to see there's a lot of film study but our coaches coach breffitt and coach long and coach gonzalez we will do walkthroughs before practice we have a segment of walkthroughs during practice i may walk through with the corners and the safeties only we may walk through with all the linebackers 
Um, at the, you know, we want to make things as simple as possible. So we allow those linebackers to really find out who's left, where's the running back and what, what scheme are we in or what call are we in? But those, those, if you look at this right here, we're a little bunched up right here for my taste. I'd like to make sure that we're at 10 yards with both those safeties that Lobo needs to be back a little bit and we need to be able to work this out and spill down that corner a little bit more. I'd like to rotate this a little more to a, a, a run force alignment, push him over number two, push him back a little bit and him back a little bit to allow all this to clear itself out. And then we can fit up there very aggressively because we have an opportunity to read the uncovered lineman. We have an opportunity to understand where the ball is to keep it on my inside half. And we have an opportunity to turn things back. And so as we get through this, I'm sorry, I know I'm taking a lot of time. Oh, no, no, this is like absolutely fantastic. I'm loving this because it takes as much time as you want. All right, thank you. Um, so here, let's look at a different formation here. Um, bah, bah, bah. So another another variation here is when you start getting, now watch them communicate back here. And that's what we've really had to teach is a lot of communication and also understanding where the force alignment is, where the run fit is. And this guy's a seasoned guy that started for several games and he should have already recognized one, two, three. I've got to see it. I've got the Y off to my side. I've got the tight end away from me. And so I've got three guys for two of them. Yeah. So we call that a three for two. And so this cat right here should walk up into a force alignment and be a linebacker. This cat should slide over. And then what does that look like pre-snap? split field coverage, yeah. right? Had they lined up just like how they would for this normal look, let him walk over just a hair and lean over into the field, walk him up. Now it looks like split field coverage to this guy right here, but we make it easy on him. And we get back here talking about three way. We can still do it from a force alignment and from our split field coverage look, but this guy has a guy, his hands in the ground. He knows I got a guy. He's not going to be able to slice. He's mine. These two guys have a slicer right here. So now they can say three for two. So the only thing that changes this variation is that. As soon as that happens, he goes to force alignment and takes it. He slides and takes his guy. He's free. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm just thinking. So let's watch it work out. I'm just thinking y'all's quarterback coach must hate y'all. That's it. Well, you know what? He's really good. <laughs> and then they do a re- – Coach Wareheim and Drew and, and, and obviously, the, uh, you know, our quarterback's coach last year, these guys did such a great job of not only coaching these guys yeah. up, but they yeah. send us different formation. This is really Coach Gonzalez is doing. When he took over the job here, he knew, to, he knew the type of offense, number one, that competes with all the offenses out there that we're seeing on basketball yeah. and grass, 11 personnel, 12 personnel, formation changes – and so we couldn't just line up a 10 personnel team every day and try to get better. We play air force. Yeah. We've got to have the ability to line up tight ends. We have to have the ability to be multiple on offense and their offense helps us. And so these guys do a really great job every day showing us something new. And I'll tell you what, I'm showing you a, a, a second scrimmage that we're a little bit better at it, but two ga- two uh, days before this, he threw all those nasty formations at it. It had us twisted up. Like we've never played the game before. Okay. And so it gave us some, so we get better weekend day in and day out because of this offensive staff. So um, you got to have an offense that can really trick you and not really trick you, um, train you daily. Now let's watch a corner get into the free play and safe, safety here. Now watch this. So as soon as that motion happens, we bump everything. You see all the talking. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that rotation. And that's, that is clean, man. That, that makes any defensive coordinator moist. Uh, as soon as as soon as that happens, the wolf safety bumps off the number two. He comes to a force alignment. The Lobo comes to a force alignment. As he's coming to a force alignment, that is essentially just Trey right there is all it is. Yeah. So the Lobo is now going to cover that Y off, and the backside wolf right there is, is the corner is going to settle on number one. He's going to become free. He's going to bump off, and he's going to slide over to a force alignment on the Y. Now check this out. If as we get down the road, we're going to lock this, but as we get down the road, if this slices, he's going to take the slice. He's going to get over his guy. He'll become free. Yeah. All the eyes go to the Y off. Watch this play by the wolf. Now he should be coming and collapsing the outside shoulder of this big old tight end right here. He should have been at six yards at the snap of the ball, 
but he does a great job of not cliffing it and make contact. His inside left hand should be on his chest and his outside right hand should be on his outside shoulder and he should be turning him inside, but that's okay. He undercuts it. He sees the play and now he's getting beat to his outside half where he has no help. So he does a great job of playing that from the bottom, bottom pocket and getting ready to undercut that. But we don't undercut anything until yeah. the ball gets there. So he's not trying to be selfish. He's going to stay in a dominant position and be able to play the hands and eyes. Really great play by that Lobo right there. That's a walk-on. And uh, that, that kid is, is, is an Albuquerque kid out of Sandia High School. And he's just done a phenomenal job grasping this, this defense and what we expect out of it. You can see the corner from the wolf go ahead and bump off. If you see the wolf now rifle, look at him play the quarterback's eyes. Yeah. See how this backside wolf kind of pops his feet. He probably he shouldn't be shuffling inside. He should be popping his feet right next to this referee, making sure that ball doesn't get handed off right there so he can go run fit inside out, be an alley player. And then he recognizes pass. So rifle over the top of the post right now and get a high to low. Look at that. Yeah. That's picture perfect right there. That's Quarterback's got to put it in one spot, and he can't quite get it there. That, that I mean, that's seamless, that's almost seamless adjustment, especially compared to what we started with a couple of clips ago. And that's what that's what I wanted you to see is the third group, two guys that have been doing it for a year, and how clean the, that communication is and bumping off right there. And then you talk about run fit. Let me pause right there. Look at that run fit fit on the back end. Yeah. He's gonna. He's already cleared your speed motion or anything that may get popped out of here late off of an RPO. And these guys have built a nice little umbrella triangle for your run yep. fit. Okay. Okay. Let's look at this again. And now I, I won't need to say a whole lot now because you're picking up on it so quickly. Okay, so now what is another flavor of everybody's game is, is get it to the four or five man side as easy as you can. So he's trying to get over there to a four man side. As he goes over, now we've got four guys, really, we've got all of these guys right here. Look at this umbrella right here. Okay, as soon as that motion's over, he's all ready to come out of the equation. Yeah. So because he comes out of the equation, force alignment, slide. Get ready for yeah. the slicer. Go free. Okay. Now look at that wolf right there. He doesn't honor that nearly enough. He's got to kind of make sure that ball's not getting thrown later in the scrimmage. They'll fake this and come right back and pop that to that, that fly motion coming over. They'll fake it, pull, pull it out and, and throw that. So we've got to do a better job of making sure that the bump, we got to make sure that ball is not coming here before we fall in. Yeah. Okay. And then these guys now become a three for two on those two right there. Yeah. And then check this out. This is like a, a terrible mistake by this corner because he's actually in the three for two. So if that ball gets pulled and he, they're throwing, he should actually be the rifle and he should actually go free because there is no number two to his side. And these guys would rotate over. And, and if those guys went vertical, these two would have them, and that guy would rifle. The problem is he's, he's right where he wants to be on the edge. There's your run fit by a corner that sees that ball get handed off. Yeah. So he says, all right, I'll jump in there and make a play. Uh, well, and, uh, and, yes, technically it's wrong, but you can't hate on having a corner that wants to tackle, Coach. That, that, that's that's kinda, exactly right. <laughs> it's kind of I don't know how, how much of a pop that is, but I'll take it yeah. right now. Especially, I mean, two yards into the backfield as a, as a right. run fitter. It's not like, I mean – some things you just kind of live with occasionally and just... No, you're right. Hit. You're right. So this is a four-man look. Again, a lot of smoke and screens and coming over here and you've got your ex back here. He's off the ball right here, so he's dead. But as as these guys start to line up, we make sure we take care of these three. Linebacker has to widen out and adjust for the run here for the run support. But at the end of the day, you've got this wolf right here should be coming over. The corner's going to, he's going to be sitting about right here. He actually could come all the way over and get ready to play run support on this side because these two guys should be right here, six and eight on those two. Yeah. And he should be over here getting ready to be able to fit up on this run right here. So he should be sliding way over here. He doesn't recognize the four men over. Then they come back in and motion back in. So they start talking and they say right now, three for two, three for two, three for two. And here we go. All three safeties are in the equation. Both corners are off. 
they go vertical, so they lock up. And you see the, the rifle. Now, here's where he screws up. Again, a corner converted to safety in a week. Yeah. His job, as I stated when we first started this, is don't drop until you know. Don't go until you know. So he should yeah. pop his feet right here. So if he did that, he would have popped and saw that hitch by the quarterback, and he could have drove on that. But because he, he backpedals this, and he doesn't even honor to get his eyes peeked out on one, he backpedals and delays, and he gets up in here late. He could have drove on that much sooner. Yeah. If that quarterback hitched and sees, sees him setting in on this, now we could stab his foot in the ground and rifle back and try to find the post. Yeah. Okay, so he should have been a part of that and got a piece right there. So it's second, now it's third and whatever. But you can kind of see how that rotation would have happened right there. Okay, let's see how. So corner needs to be in a nice force alignment. I need that Lobo to slide over number two right there. He's a little bit, sorry, there's a wolf there, so we're good. The Lobo's right where he needs to be. So off the snap of the ball right here, we've got Bunch over here. So these guys are better than enough. So we've got three guys over here peeking at these three. Look what his eyes are. Okay, yeah. right there. He's going to look at uncover, get an early run read. If he gets run read to his side, he's going to go fit. If he gets a slice, he's going to go fit. If he gets anything vertical and a pass look, he's going to now pop his feet on the goal line because he doesn't drop into the into the end zone, and he's going to play the quarterback's eyes from there. Okay. Okay? Let's see how it works out here. Now, there it is. Let's trick these guys up. Smart offenses. You guys kill me. You're a bunch of cheaters. <laughs> okay? All right. So here's here's where this gets really cool here. So watch the the wolf on the boundary side right here. I'm going to talk to you in a minute. He really should come in here and take the first inside route here. Okay. But he sees quarterback hitch now. So he drives on the, the slant and post should be a whole lot harder than that. He's our first team, all conference safety, Jared Reed. He should be there a whole lot quicker than that, but he's over there realizes that's going to be a jump ball fade ball. Now it's up to the corner to make a play. Okay. But had they come this direction, watch the, the, the walk on Lobo tell that to the corner to bump. So the corner's off now, just off of that motion. The corner's going to come off to this. Yeah. And this wolf that you can't see or I can't see, maybe you can see it, but be, behind your picture, yeah. this wo Lobo and this wolf have these three. Yeah. So he would come over, he would kind of settle back, and he would drive outside. And however they change these routes would go right to them. Yeah. A three-way. So you see it happens naturally. Do you see it right there? Yeah. All right. So with this motion right here, the corner's out of the equation. Now it belongs to all three safeties. Watch how it happens naturally. Now, this route right here belongs to Jarek. Yeah. Okay? But Jarek sees this, this ball is already getting pulled. That's why you see Jarek pulling out of there. But if this quarterback would have been hitched up in here at all, Jarek would drive on that. Yeah. The Lobo is going to take the vertical. Let me play it out a second. Right there, yep. The Lobo's taking this, and the Wolf's taking this, and the corner's taking this. Okay. Patience, and then go after it. Patience, aggressive. See how it played out right there? Yeah. Okay. Lobo comes off because it's hitched and thrown, but you see we got guys on guys. Because of that motion right there, now the linebacker doesn't have to take that. That belongs to a DB now. That, that becomes empty at the end of the day. It becomes what a five-on-five five coverage for us, and that allows us now to all five of this cover all five of theirs because we were in a man-free. Now, you say to yourself, okay, so if – he as soon as this happens – let me let me play it out really quick, sorry – Right there. If this linebacker would have been thinking peel and he peeled with this, yeah, the safety that's coming over or the corner would be coming off and he sees the peel attached to it. Now he can zone up and be a linebacker. Okay. So even in our five on five coverage, if our peel rules are on, and again, it depends on what call it is, but if our peel rules are on and he's taken, then I can come off and I become free. So that's another variation of a man-free concept that's not technically cover one. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. It's five on five, but it depends on the call. And if that linebacker would have seen it, he probably could appeal with that. Then that corner can come off.
but he won't come off until we know the peel is handled. We're never going to let that back be not taken. Okay, there we go again. Let's go back. So now we're getting motion on the fly now. They're trying to catch us on the move. So right here, let's let's talk about rookies real fast. All right. So <laughs> he should be in a in a split field look. He should be up. He should be over. He should be standing right here. Yeah. Standing right here in a cover two look, and then he's gonna walk up and get to that outside shoulder, and he's gonna play free from right there. But they motion over. So as soon as that happens, now these two are comboed for these two, and he's free. Yeah. Okay. As soon as that combination happens now, there's your run fits. Now, I'll talk to you about a little bit about technique here on your run fits. So the Lobo's out of position. He's a walk-on, too, and he's brand new. So you can see that he, he's got to know that when I'm pre-snap free, which he is, he should be standing right here at 10 yards. Yeah, He's way too shallow to be able to work all that out. So depth is what we talked about early on. So as soon as that comes over... You got to see, take everything on with your inside shoulder, but we don't like to take things on and give ourselves up. So if you notice Nick's hands come up right there, yeah. we want to go through the outside shoulder. We want to stay nice and square, but we also got to play flat and get off of this right here. So he's got to really extend that inside hand and play flat here and not try to chase the back tail. We want to get and go right to the near hip. So he gets caught up in this and we call this giving yourself up. Once you give up your shoulder like this, you can't play a run right here. So they do a good job with our tailback right here, doing a really good job of getting up in his, in his chili right there and locking him up. Now the safety has to get over the top right here, but because of his pre-snap alignment, the Lobo, he could have fallen right down in on top of that. So why Nick is trying to turn that inside, the Lobo should have been right off his hip making that play, but because he was pre-snap misaligned, he can't get there. Now 25 has got to get at a good angle. And this is something we didn't do a great job of last year is running to the ball all the way back here. This is what we talk about yeah. at the end of the play, making sure that these guys are saying, okay, run, pursuit, turn into pursuit here, and sprint to the ball, and 11's got to be at a good angle at the end of this. Now, 25, this is a great finish right here. Watch him get all the way through the ball carrier, and if you watch it from this back angle, Right there, it's probably a little questionable. And we're gonna, we teach our guys that we don't want to play cheap. We don't want to play dirty. We don't want to play classless football. But anytime that it, there's a chance to press the limits right here, we, he can't tell if that's in, inbounds or not. So we love the finish right here off of this safety. His name's Quay, and he does a good job of getting through there and, and striking him with his near shoulder, near foot. You see it right there? Yep. Near shoulder, near foot, and striking him out of bounds instead of running all the way over there to give him a little bit of a shove and push him out and hope he goes out. He's going to make sure he's out. So that's a pretty dang good finish right there. Okay. Okay. They, they give a little tumble. We're good to go here. So it's really hard to tell right now as far as formationally, but we're changing the front a little bit. They're making their adjustments, but it doesn't do anything to us. We should be in a three away for these three. Corners got him. Quay should be free, and right now he's a little lost. He, all he had to do was line up on this backside tackle and play it from there. He starts to walk over the ball, and he gets way, get out, gets out of position here. Yeah. Okay, he's still almost over the tackle. He's right there is where he screws up. Yeah. He should have just stayed on the tackle and played it from there. Okay, there still is a slice alert, so it's going to be from this tight formation wing right here. And so if he sliced across, he could go run fit, he'd be free. So um, off of the first two snaps, eyes go to the Y, he comes across, Quay comes off, he's free, and he's locked on the tight end. But if either one of these guys run fit, he's up in it, he's up in it, he's popping his feet and driving free. Yeah. There's your run fit. Check the quarterback. So be a little bit patient on the cutback alley. Quay was out of position, so he had to recover back out to keep the ball in his inside half. And you see the Lobo get up in there and, and try to get a piece as he as the running back's going down. Yeah. 
Well, he's got to be far more active, but if he would have been lined up correctly, he would have been free. He would have, this corner could have lined up a little bit further outside of this. He could have slid over and stayed on this tackle, popped his feet and dropped right down on top of that play and made a clean tackle instead of working through all that traffic. Yeah. When we get out of time, you just need to tell me because I could be here till midnight. <laughs> Let's let, let's work okay. through, let's, yeah. coach. Let's work through two more, and then I'll, I'll, I'll we'll do our last couple questions, and then we'll go from there. Okay, here's a good, clean, normal alignment without all the crap. You've got Wolf up top. He's going to be outside shoulder. I'd like to see that Lobo slide over a little bit, get the uh, split field look. I'd like Quay to line up here at ten yards, and then walk down to this force alignment. Um, I, anytime that we have a normal Y off, both of these guys should be at ten yards. And not yeah. this far deep up inside right there, but it could be down in distance. It's only second and nine. So at the very best, Quay should be at eight yards. And these guys right here should be playing fit free. Okay. There, there it goes right there. Now, here's a, here's what I want you to see one thing. Quay can zone up here because he's got a guy that Y off right there. As soon as that Y off blocks, he doesn't need to stray too far away for the delay. So all he needs to do is sit at six yards, look for a scrambling quarterback or help with the crosser. He becomes a linebacker now. Yeah. So now he's essentially got two free players because this cat's blocking and he's rifling with the quarterback's eyes. Let's see his rifle technique. Look at that head turn right there. He looks, he goes to the quarterback's eyes, sees him go back to the field, a nice speed turn, and he gets right into the post and we's right back into it. That's pretty, pretty good right there, taking care of the post and not knowing where quarterback's going. So he's staying right there in front of the post and keeping it clean. I think the wolf safety on the top does a pretty piss poor job of staying on the back pocket. He gives separation there, and that's why we run, man, free to clean up some of that yeah. terrible technique. Last one here. Okay, three, uh, three by one. We're in good shape, six and eight. There we go. They start talking to each other. I got him. I got him. I got him. Both the wolves are going to be at – now. I don't like this pre-snap right here. We just told the quarterback we're either in cover three and they're going to bail or we're in man free. I don't like giving them two options yeah. there. He should have stayed at 10 and he should have stayed right where he's at. It still looks like split field coverage. And then he should have walked down in here at six and, and tied in. So we don't cliff it. We don't scoot it. Go ahead and beat the hell out of it. Take care of his outside shoulder and send it into your, your free uh, Lobo in there. Straight, straight two by two makes life easy. Don't st and he doesn't need to be staring at his receiver either. He should get a good pre-snap run read. He's in a force alignment, outside shoulder. See how he backs up right here? We don't need to ever back away from a tight end. This is why we don't cliff it. This is why we don't give space. He does a good job of reconnecting and getting right back where he should be. But by backing up, look at the down and distance right there. By backing up, he just gave him the sticks. Yeah. Okay? So on a conversion, we're going to be in trouble. Okay, so he can do the exact same thing with just popping his feet and get his hand, his left hand on his sternum, his right hand on his right shoulder, and forcing him inside. Don't back away from him. Let the Lobo help him over the top. Lobo's playing quarterback's eyes, and there's nowhere to go with the ball. Yeah. Okay? That was perfect, Coach. Now, I, 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 mean, I, I, I know we went through that very, very quickly, and, and there's so much more to it. Yeah. and. And early on, we do a lot of locking. And as things progress, we do some comboing and we'll trade some things and we'll hand things off. And, but again, it's about your earliest point was how do you teach all this? It's about volume control. It's about making sure that as offenses make it louder, we control the volume and we've got to do a really good job of controlling that and not letting it get too loud on us and uh, doing a really good job of, slowing things down mainly between right here and not worrying so much about what they're doing, yeah. talking to each other and listening to each other's music. Now, before, before we go, I got, I got a couple quick questions, which, which we kind of talked about before you came on today. Um, first, before, before we get into anything else is what advice do you, I mean, you, you, you've been around, around for a while and coaching high school and college. What advice do you have for young coaches, especially defensive coaches? Well, Jordan Salkin kind of said it best. He was our offensive uh, quarterbacks coach last year, and he went to the Miami Dolphins. And I, he told one of our GAs one time in a in a note when he left, he said, never stop thinking like a GA. 
And after my first year and, and transitioning into the second year, like you couldn't take any better advice. I don't care wh what level you are. I don't care what position you coach. Never stop thinking like a GA. And that made all the sense in the world to me because as a head football coach at a 6A program that had three state championship appearances and had been and, and won two of them, um, we had a ton of success. But as a head coach, I never stopped thinking like a GA. I did the laundry. I, I fixed machinery. I, I coached for other coaches. I did what I needed. I did anything that I was asked to do um, by parents, by administration, by kids. We, you know, I did anything I could do to help, and I jumped in. And I guess because somewhere along the line, somebody taught me to never stop thinking like a GA. So when I transitioned into college and I had to re-roll, and people always said, was it hard going from being a head football coach back to an assistant? I said, you know, it hasn't been at all. Number one, because of the people that I work with and work for. But number two, I've always thought like a GA. And so I've always done these duties and I've always done these things. And it's never been difficult on me because, you know, you let your ego take over or you let titles take over and you're not being the best you can be where you're at. And that's ultimately the, the you go to any clinic, they talk about being the best that you can be where you're at. Yeah. And if you're going to be any sound defensive coordinator or a head football coach or a or a, a position coach, you got to be the best at where you're at. And when you come in with zero street cred, 47 years old, um, you know, a, a really good <laughs> high school resume, but these kids don't see that. They want to be coached by somebody that was with the Dallas Cowboys for 11 years. Yeah. And when you don't have that type of street cred, you got to come in and earn their respect. And you've got to come in and, and, and show them how much you care, how much you love the game, how much you love them and how much you're here for the right reasons. And if you can't do that, you're not going to be successful. I don't care who you are. And so, you know, one big thing that I've always leaned on or, or lived by is never lie to them. And, and sometimes people think I'm a little bit too brutal and honest. But I, I, I now coach for a guy that doesn't lie to anybody and can be very brutally honest, including yeah. to me. And, um, and so I can tell you that I respect that. And I know these players respect honesty. And they need to be told the truth and they don't they don't want to be lied to and they don't want to be sugarcoated because when it doesn't work out, you're a liar. And when it yeah. when it does work out or it doesn't work out, um, they respect the fact that you are honest and you told them the truth. And I were my my office or um, athletic director at Rio Rancho. He happened to have played with under Coach Long years and years and years ago. And he said as a walk on when Coach Long sat him down and had an honest conversation with him about where he was and what he could do and where he saw him on this team. He said that was the most valuable conversation I've ever had with a coach was somebody that was willing to tell me, um, you know, where my limitations were or what he saw for my future and allowed me to make decisions off to off of honesty. So to those young coaches, honesty, um, and, and never stop thinking like a GA and, and never stop start getting arrogant and, and complacent because those are all, um, a death wish to a football coach. All right. And, and then kind of, I'm going to kind of combine these two is, I mean, what, what do you look for when you're scouting an opponent? And then is there any particular data points you guys pay attention to in terms of, okay, we're worried about turnovers. We're worried about explosive plays. Is there anything specific y'all are worried about? So we're always worried about people scoring points, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I can tell you, uh, you know, talking to, you know, that, that is very interesting. I've had conversations over the years of defensive coordinators that I hired. And, and then I had conversations with coach long and coach Gonzalez. And at the end of the day, did we win? Yeah. Uh, we've got to score one more point than our opponent and we got to limit the big plays and we've got to limit eliminate the, so we look at big plays and where they're coming from and why. Um, we look at obvious, the, the things yards per play yards per pass yards per rush. Those are kind of postseason data points that we look at. Those are things we pay attention during the year, but we really, our data points are based off of personnel. How, you know, how often these players are getting the football, who are the high targets, who are the best players? Um, how do we need to prepare for their personnel? How can we best match up with them? Those are the in season data points. And then you start looking at scoring defense and, Turnover ratio, that's huge to us, obviously. We're trying to take the ball away, and how physical are we playing? And that was number one to us coming in. Obviously, red zone, red zone efficiency, um, third down efficiency, fourth down conversions. Um, but after you weed through all of that, that's just kind of tightening all the bolts in your machinery. 
but did we win? That's that's really you know where we're at and what we're trying to do is win a fifth conference championship here and and um, and really build a, a program of integrity and strength and and uh, build on an athletic department that that traditionally has been tremendous and uh, we're really trying to build this 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 community back again and that comes with um, extreme passion and extreme. Uh, aggressiveness on the on, on the field and effort 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 so data points is all based on effort if you're not if you're not giving effort none of that other stuff is going to work out and it's not going to be in your favor i promise you so our data points is how aggressive and 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 how how much you love the game of football and how if you play this game correctly or not and and if you don't you won't be playing and our data points are probably going to be better now you mentioned a little bit there, and this is kind of the last thing we'll do before we wrap up is is you kind of look at r- r- rush yards per game and all that stuff after the season. Um, how do, you, especially with something as unique as what you do, how do you evaluate that? To see what is successful and what isn't after the season, and kind of what you need to tinker with. So if you would have asked that question 10 years ago, they would be telling you 2.2 yards of play, 2.2 yard, anything that would keep you <laughs> fun. But nowadays with basketball on grass yeah. and, and the variations and the speed of it and tempo, those numbers have changed drastically. And as long as those yards per play aren't getting up around the fives and sixes and, and you're doing a great job of winning third down and fourth down and you're causing punts and you're doing your job on defense of keeping them out of the end zone, then, then, then things are pretty good. But the old days in the old school football of measuring that on two yards of rush, that, that's out the window. There's too many good players. There's too many good offenses. There's too, ma- too much basketball on grass. Um, I mean, it's just like the NBA. If you score less than 120, um, it, you know, it, it's kind of a bad night. <laughs> and so, you know, so, you know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that we let up on these guys at all. I mean, we're looking to keep people down – under 10 points we're tr- trying to keep them out of the end zone but there's a re- there's a little bit of element of reality to this to this stuff and what used to be seven points a game is probably 17 points a game yeah. and if you hold an opponent to 21 points a game nowadays you're probably winning a bunch of fo- a bunch of football games well, well coach I, I can honestly say I, I feel like I got a, like a PhD course in man free so I appreciate that um, Coaches, uh, please follow Coach on Twitter. Reach out to him if you want to talk to him. Uh, Coach is fantastic. Coach got back to me immediately when I reached out to him. So please reach out to Coach. He's, he's a great guy. Like I said, he's a former high school coach. Um, so he's more than happy to help us high school coaches out. Um, please check out our sponsors and affiliates below. Uh, please, if there's any point that you want to go back and listen to, as usual, uh, the video tags and the audio tags will be below. So you can go back to those direct points and listen to Coach. Um, I kind of just let him talk today because just how good this stuff was. And like, I, didn't, I mean, I can't, like, again, I want to learn a little bit more about how they do man free, and I, I think we all kind of learned that today. So, Coach, I, I want to say thank you again before I close this. I, I do appreciate that uh, a lot. It was my pleasure. Go Lobos. We appreciate all support, and, and any way we can help, we're, we're here to do it. Thank you, coaches. That was another episode of the Gap Down Backer Podcast.